My name is Larry, I live by the river. The wind is so cold, it's making me shiver. I went to the store and bought me a coat to wear outside when I'm sitting in my boat. Mr. Lofton says you've been working real hard. You just might grow up to be my bodyguard. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. I'm gonna eat some bread and dance with a toad. Yeah. Peace to my old boys. Good old Larry uh, making his rap uh, debut. How'd you like that, kids? <laughs> He's got some mad skills. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday, May 13th, 2020. Uh, Boy, it's been a long time since I've filmed a video at my house. I think it was the second episode, I believe, I did an episode from uh, from my home. It seems like a long time ago, but uh, I, I do most of my work at school. It's just easier because normally during the day, <clears throat> I have my three kids. As you can see, one of them back there. Hi, Lukey. Hi. Say hi, kids. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You eating a donut? What are you eating? Uh oh, he's eating Lucky Charms. See, <laughs> you little turkey. Uh, so, yeah, with the kids, it's really hard sometimes to make videos, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just try it and see how it goes because I'm, you know, helping all three boys with their things, um, their homework, and, you know, making them breakfast and lunch and trying to do some laundry, clean the house. And then on top of that, I'll show you. On top of that, as you can see, uh, Mrs. Zacker, fourth grade teacher, some of you might have her, they're building a house right next door. And then in my yard, uh, that's my father-in-law. He's here. His name is Lloyd. He's here um, helping me get my uh, yard ready uh, because we're going to plant uh, grass on Saturday. So you have all this stuff going on, and then I'm supposed to try to work at the same time. <laughs> so... You know, most of the time I spend my day, you know, going through your work, checking in the work that you hand in to me, and, uh, you know, lots of you have questions, so I, uh, you know, send messages or have, like, one-on-one -on -one chats with you. I do my hangouts from home. You've seen me uh, from home, <clears throat> and then on top of that, you know, there's, uh, even though we're not, um, there's no baseball season, it was canceled, there's things that I'm doing for that uh, throughout the, the day. Uh, so it gets pretty crazy at home, so I don't do any filming, but hey, I'll try anything once. So we'll try to see how this goes. So, uh, we'll go through your, um, assignments and your work for today. Uh, first of all, AR, boy, uh, kids are starting to ramp up with the AR and your time's running out. You have until next Friday to get the goals, uh, done. Uh, reach out to Mrs. Dressel. If you don't know her email address, uh, I will send it to you. Uh, I know I've sent it out a few times, but I'll send it out to you again. Uh, you can also check out Epic for books that you want to read. That's free for you and uh, uh, plenty of options uh, there. Um, you know, Charlotte's Web, that's another option for you too. If you really want to read that later this week or next week, let me know. I can get a copy of that for you. It's five points. Plus, you do it, you get extra credit. So pretty good deal. Um, so yeah, so continue with your AR, your journal assignments. You have you have your journal topics. I'm not going to go through those with you. You you're, you can do that on your own. You have your journal topics. I will go through with you uh, today's st uh, studies weekly. It's called uh, Ecosystems. Week six, Ecosystems, our green planet. So we're, we're coming to the end of uh, studies weekly. Uh, and then in math, uh, hold on, in math, your graded assignment, your graded assignment will be this sheet called Flows Flags, all right? So we're going to talk a little bit about picture graphs, um, and this will be your graded assignment, but I'll also show you a few things on IXL that you can, you can do to stay smart there as well. You're going to see lots of, <clears throat> uh, you know, not only in your schoolwork, but just in, in real life, uh, lots of graphs, you know, that show information. It might be, you know, uh, you know, you might be watching something on, on the news about uh, the number of votes that somebody got, or you might see the, the uh, watching a sporting event and the number of touchdowns or points or something like that. Reading a picture graph um, is very useful and helpful and important. Um, and it's another, just another way to show data or information or the stuff you need to know. And then finally, too, you know, you, you have a bunch of these. Uh, as always, continue with your Mad Minutes. 
Uh, what I like about the Mad Men is if you've, I don't know if you've noticed, but on the very bottom, it shows the year these things were made, 1981. <laughs> so uh, I love the fact that, you know, it, this stuff's been around a long time, but you know what? It's, it's a great way to get your facts done. Just one minute a day. One minute. You build that one minute in every day, boom, boom, boom. Those facts are going to be like breathing. So... We're going to go to a sponsor, and I need you to get your studies weekly out so uh, you know what to do there. Luke, do you want to say anything to the kids? No. Say bye, dudes. Bye, <laughs> All right, here's our uh, sponsor. I'm going to paint a 10. Now, let's see, where can I paint a 10? Aha! love those videos <laughs> i think what i like best about uh, the mad painter is those times when he goes hmm <laughs> i can't do it as good as he can so let's hear the mad painter go hmm hmm Let's get your studies weekly out and let's take a peek at that, shall we? All right, here we go. All right, so let's take a look at our week six ecosystems studies weekly. All right, so the opening article, it's titled Green Planet, and you're going to read a uh, just an interesting article about beavers. All right, uh, <laughs> beavers are pretty amazing creatures. You know, if, uh, if you happen to watch that Boundary Waters video of mine, uh, I've got some pretty good footage of crossing over a beaver dam and standing on a beaver dam. It was really one of the coolest things I've ever done. Uh, beavers are incredible, incredible creatures. If you want to learn more about beavers, check out a book, go to Brain Pop, YouTube, all kinds of things. Also, a neat little article about one smart puppy. You know, <laughs> you know, the first sentence here says, you know, do you ever sit in your room and talk to your dog? You know, that's one thing I miss about having a dog is talking to... You know, talking to my dog when I had my, my, my dog, Sophie. Oh, nice little puppy. I bet though you so nice. I really miss talking to my dog. Anyway, read this article about this, uh, about service dogs. It's a really cool uh, article. When you open up the, the art or the magazine, you're going to see uh, uh, this page is a very busy page. I want to highlight, first of all, what ecosystems are. Ecosystems... They're basically the living and non-living things uh, in an area, a specific area, uh, that uh, interact with each other. So, like, you know, the per a perfect example of an ecosystem that you've all been to is the Prairie Nature Center. Uh, in the Nature Center, you know, the living things, you know, they're the, the birds and the deer, the squirrels, coyotes that are out there, butterflies, all that stuff. And, you know, plants, trees, milkweed, grass. And then the non-living things, you know, the dirt, uh, rocks, the benches, the dock out there, you know, uh, all those non-living things and how they all work together. That's what an ecosystem is. All right. Uh, a few things I want to highlight here 
on the left, it talks about a food chain, all right? All living things need energy, uh, get their energy from food. And uh, when things are eaten, all that energy goes from one thing to the next. And I want to just highlight a couple of very simple uh, food chains for you. Let's take a look at this first one. All the energy that uh, we get comes from the sun, all right? So the sun shines uh, down to earth and it uh, allows plants to grow, okay? So that energy went from the sun to the plant and then a grasshopper comes and eats uh, some of the plant. So now that energy has transferred from the plant to the grasshopper. Grasshopper, you know, moves around and then it gets eaten by a mouse. So now the energy has gone from the grasshopper to the mouse and then the mouse is uh, not paying attention. A snake comes by, swallows it whole, and uh, the energy now has gotten its way to the snake. Okay, that's a pretty simple uh, food chain. I want to show you this one. Again, if you take a look, I'm going to introduce some words. Uh, go look on the left-hand side. We see grass growing and then a sun shining. All right, this, the energy comes from the sun and it makes uh, plants. A plant is called a producer. A producer is something that makes food. It makes its own food. It doesn't rely on anything else to, to provide the food for it. All right, so all plants are producers. So then we have, if you, if you see, uh, the arrow goes up to the right, the grasshopper eats the grass, all right? The grasshopper is what we call a consumer. A consumer needs to eat something else to get the energy it needs. It can't make its own energy. So the grasshopper eats the grass to get energy. It's called a consumer. The bird eats the grass. The snake eats the bird. Okay, these are all consumers because they have to eat something else to get the energy that they need. Then the, looks like they're hawks. We'll say that it's a hawk. The hawk comes down, eats the uh, snake and uh, an animal that eats another animal, you know this, you've probably heard it, they're called uh, predators. So the hawk, the snake, and the bird are all predators because they eat other animals, all right? Uh, and so that hawk, we also call him an apex predator. An apex predator is like the largest, pre uh, the largest predator in an ecosystem area. You know, other apex predators might be tigers, they might be lions, uh, grizzly bears. But eventually that animal is going to die. And what happens to it? Well, the body uh, goes into the ground and things called decomposers come and eat the rest of the body. You know, decomposers include like worms, maggots, like scavengers or decomposers, you know, like a vulture, mushrooms. Okay. And so then what happens is that it allows plants to grow and then the cycle starts all over again. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's basically what the uh, food chain is, all right? And we take a look here. You can read quickly what decomposers, producers, and consumers are there uh, in greater detail. Um, over here on the right side, again, great pictures of six types of animals, all right? A carnivore, we have, we have carnivore, omnivore, prey, predator, scavenger, and herbivore. A carnivore is a, is a meat eater. Okay, uh, an animal that eats other animals. Omnivore is an animal that eats both plants and animals. Humans are a prime example of omnivores. Prey, uh, prey is an animal that's eaten by another animal. And who eats the prey? Well, the predator. See that tiger there? He's looking at that elephant ready to have a little lunch. A scavenger, you see this vulture. A scavenger is an animal that eats uh, things that are already dead. All right, so you'd see a vulture, like if there was a dead deer in the ditch or something, you'd probably see a vulture uh, eating that. And then an herbivore, an herbivore is a, is a fancy name for a plant uh, eating animal. Okay, so there you go. You can check those out. And you're, if you're interested in this stuff, yeah, I, yeah, Google carnivores or go to Brain Pop or, you know, YouTube. And, oh, gosh, there's all kinds of things that, to uh, entertain yourself. Uh, a couple articles on the bottom. One I want to touch on, first of all, is the one on the right where it talks about are dead things important in an ecosystem. Yes, they are. Dead things are extremely important and decomposers are extremely important because if we didn't have decomposers, 
those things that break down dead animals and plants, uh, there'd be dead animals laying all over the place once they died. So yes, they are very important. Uh, a couple other little articles. Uh, one is a mini lab. Uh, you can create something called a terrarium. A terrarium is a little habitat uh, you can make. So you can check that out. That would be kind of fun to do. And then also, too, there's a little article about a guy named Aldo Leopold. All right. Uh, this man was extremely important for helping protect the environment and uh, nature. And what he did is he taught people how important it was to preserve the wilderness so that people today can enjoy uh, nature, which is way uh, the way it looked all the time. So, you know, example is that or is if you go to state parks, Itasca State Park. Itasca State Park was almost not a park. Uh, uh, when it was passed in the year 1891. You know, Yellowstone, uh, you know, all those other great national parks that we have, we have to thank guys like Aldo Leopold for standing up and saying, hey, we need to, we need to save these places. So anyway, you can check that article out. Uh, another really cool mini lab, uh, talking about oil spills. Oh my goodness, oil spills are horrible uh, events. Uh, it's kind of one of those difficult things because oil is an extremely important thing in our way of life uh, in terms of machines and cars and trucks and that stuff, but it's very toxic too once it spills uh, or, if, it, uh, or if, it, if it's somewhere in the environment where it's not supposed to be. Anyway, here's a really neat uh, experiment you can do to find out what happens in an oil spill in the ocean. All right, You'll need an adult for this. And there's five materials that you need. Uh, you probably have these things lying around. The hardest thing would probably be to be able to find a clean feather. All right. So that would be the hardest thing maybe to find. But uh, anyway, a really powerful visual to see what happens. If you want to know what more happens, I went on YouTube and Googled oil spills. Oh, my goodness. There's seriously millions of videos out there uh, to see what, what happens when uh, a big oil ship or a pipe uh, breaks in water. It's it's absolutely horrifying. But it's interesting too. On the back page, uh, here is your assignment. You have two parts. First, you have the crossword puzzle. There's eight different uh, terms. So you have eight words to fill in in the crossword puzzle. All right. And then on the bottom, you have to uh, do this part. It says, is it a producer, consumer, or decomposer? So what you need to do is you need to look at each item and figure out which one is it. For example, the tiger. Is the tiger a producer? Does it make its own food? Is it a consumer? Does it have to go find its own food? Or is it a decomposer? Does it only eat things that are already dead? Okay, uh, the answer to that one would be consumer. So you need to do the other ones on your own, circle them, and uh, go for it. This is optional, another simple mini lab. Here's another little food chain. See if you can figure out this food chain on your own. And what you need to do is you need to draw the energy arrows from where the energy begins to whatever uses the energy. So for example, uh, the Earth's energy comes from the sun. Okay, what? Uh, where would the sun's energy go to first? Then you would just continue to draw the arrows to complete the food chain. All right, so boys and girls, that is your studies weekly. I know that was kind of a long uh, explanation, but very interesting things. Ecosystems are extremely important, uh, and especially if you live in the country, you live, wherever you live is part of an ecosystem. You're part of the living and non-living things that surround you. This is due on Thursday. Good luck. All right, so enjoy your studies weekly, and I would suggest uh, doing some research on like oil spills, ecosystems, uh, the food chain, food web, all kinds of stuff. So, all right, uh, say hi, Luke. Hi. Okay, uh, how are you today? I'm great. You're doing great? Oh, my. How come? Why are you doing great? Because I am excited to go outside. You're excited to go outside? And you want to tell the kids what you're getting in the mail? What are you getting? A remote control car. A remote control car. Oh, my gosh. And you're going to play. Let me see. You're going to drive it on top of the roof, aren't you? And I'm going to drive it in the dirt. Oh, you're going to drive it in the it's dirt. It's going to make dust. It's going to make dust. Do you like getting dirty? Mm, yeah. A little bit. Do you? 
I'm scared. I'm trying to get a little tiny bit dirty. You just want to get a little tiny bit dirty? Yeah. Okay. So we are going to go to a commercial break. Uh, and uh, you need to get your math packet out. This is your math assignment, the Flows Flag Sheet. And uh, I'll be right back. Say bye, Luke. Bye. See you soon. Yeah. And now, it's time to play Name That Food with Don Carrots. All right, players, you know the rules. A food type is flashed on the game board. First player to identify it and eats it wins the round. Ready? Celery! Correct. Will you eat it? I sure will. That's 25 points for Debbie. Now, here's our second food. Liver? You're right. Will you eat it? I'll pass. Number one? Yes! That's 50 points and a big lead by contestant number one, Debbie. Now here's your next food. I'll guess squash. Will you eat it? No way. I will, Don. That gives you 75 points. Now for the final round and the championship. Take your time. Spaghetti and meatball. Right. Will you eat it? But I never have before. Number one, will you eat it? It's good. That's it. Our champion with 100 points. Well, that's all the time we have. This is Don Carrot reminding you to try a new food today. All contestants win a free coconut, fresh broccoli, two dozen fresh extra large eggs, and a pound of Gouda cheese. So, moral of the story after watching the game show Name That Food, try new foods, right? You'll never know uh, unless you try it. So I encourage you to try new foods uh, anytime that you get. The worst case, the worst thing that's going to happen is you don't like it, and then the good thing is then you know you won't like it. So I'm going to do a little mini lesson on picture graphs. So play attention and then you'll get to do your assignment. <laughs> All righty. So I want to do a little mini lesson on pictographs. Another name for them is picture graphs. These things use pictures to show information. The pictures usually stand for a certain amount of a particular item. If you look at this pictograph, we've got a list of kids, and then it's keeping track of the number of web pages or websites they visited. Anytime you have a pictograph, you have to be very careful to look at the bottom of the pictograph to figure out what each picture represents. So we can see on this pictograph that each full computer screen stands for two web pages. And a half of a computer screen stands for one. Okay, so that's very important because a lot of times ki kids will look at the pictures and just assume it means one. So you, they just start counting and they'll type in or write in the answer based on just the number of pictures. So for this one, it says, how many web pages did Pete visit? Well, if you didn't read and look at the key underneath, you would put seven. Well, you know that that would be wrong because if you, you're, you need to count by twos. This is where multiplication comes in. You can either count by twos, but if you know there's seven pictures and there's two, uh, each picture stands for two, seven times two, 14. Done. Let's take a look at this pictograph. Now, this one, we're talking about uh, baskets made, all right? And each, I have to look at the bottom of the pictograph, each picture of a basketball stands for five baskets. Now the question here, it asks, how many baskets did the students make in all? Well, you're gonna have to count all of the pictures and uh, of, of the uh, basket of the basketballs to figure out that answer, all right? So that one would take a little work, but you just count by fives. This third one, we see favorite winter Olympic sports. And we see pictures of snowflakes. So again, we have to go to the bottom of the pictograph and see what each snowflake represents. It represents two children. So if I wanted to ask, okay, how many, uh, how many children pick hockey? Well, I can see that there are two snowflakes. I come up by two, two, four, done. Four kids like hockey, all right? And then the final one that I have for you, uh, pumpkin picking going to be a long time before we pick pumpkins, but we'll be planting them here pretty soon. Anyway, um, this one, each full pumpkin, we have to look at the bottom, each full pumpkin represents 10 pumpkins, and a half of a pumpkin stands for five, all right? 
So this question asks, well, how many pumpkins did Ariana pick? I go to Ariana and see that there's two full pumpkins. I count by tens twice. I know that that's 20 or 10 times two is 20 pumpkins. Done. Now for your assignment, uh, the flag worksheet, again, you have to look underneath the pictograph to see what each flag represents. And we can see that each flag stands for three flags. All right. So not only that, then you have to read the, care for the questions carefully, too, based on what they're asking. All right. Uh, so read the questions carefully. Remember, pictograph, always look at what the symbol represents, how many, and uh, really take your time on these because if you go too fast, you make silly mistakes, and that's where you go from having getting a good grade to a poor grade. Take a picture of this flag assignment and send it to me, and that's it. You're done. Good luck on your math. Uh, in IXL, if you want to continue doing math in IXL, I would highly suggest to go to IXL and go to the U category. U, the letter U as in unicorn. Tons of uh, skills there on bar graphs, line graphs, pictographs, you name it. Uh, if you want to get sharpened up on that, uh, go for it. By the way, You'll be able to go on to IXL, uh, I believe, through the month of June. Um, so, you know, if it's in, in June and you're like, oh, I'm bored, whatever, I want to practice some skills, go for it. Uh, you should be able to use IXL through the month of June for free. All right. Uh, I have three trivia questions. They all have to kind of do with the same thing, but um, uh, they all have to do with years, okay, the number of years. I want you to take a guess how many years are in a century, a decade, and a millennium, all right? So the words I have, I have century, how many years in a century, how many years in a decade, how many years in a millennium, okay? Answer is coming up right away. Hope uh, to see you at Hangouts at 8.30 a.m. It'll be a whole class Hangout. We'll see you then. If not, we'll, we will do another Hangout on Friday. Uh, look for some really exciting news about a school parade that's going to be taking place next week. You'll get information on that uh, too. Uh, so it'll be really cool. It'll be an opportunity for me to get to see you. Uh, so if that works out for you, check it out. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, stay smart, stay awesome, stay you, and I'm really proud of you, and I really miss you. All right? Have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye.